Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about four different cannabinoids that are underrated in my opinion. So sit back and enjoy. Let's jump right in. I feel like we talk a lot about CBD and THC on my channel and in life in general. CBD and THC are probably the most common or most commonly talked about cannabinoids in the cannabis plant. Some of the cannabinoids on this list are going to be ones that are isolated and you can buy them on the market in the hemp market from CBD manufacturers, etc. One of these products is from a dispensary, but for the most part, these are all extracted from hemp, so anyone can buy them even if you don't have a medical card. The first one I want to talk about is Delta 8 THC. I did one video a while ago talking a little bit about Delta 8 THC, but let's talk about it again. It's gaining popularity these days, so what is Delta 8 THC and how is it similar or different to Delta 9 THC or regular THC? Delta 8 THC is going to be slightly different from Delta 9 THC, and one big thing that's different about Delta 8 THC is it is federally legal, so anyone can buy it over a certain age. Delta 8 is federally legal at this point, and that's all that I have to say on the matter as far as legality goes. I have some Delta 8 THC here. I have a tincture that was sent to me. I really liked the gummies a lot better than I liked the tincture. Honestly, like, wouldn't really recommend this tincture, so it's Delta 8 hemp. You probably want their gummies, not their tincture, in my opinion. The gummies were really good. So right now, most anyone can buy Delta 8 THC, but what does it do? Why would you want it, etc.? So Delta 8 THC could be considered a legal way to get high because Delta 8 THC can get you kind of high, but it's not going to be as potent as Delta 9 THC. Something I tried when I had some Delta 8 gummies on hand was I tried Delta 8 THC and Delta 9 THC at the same time and whoa, it was pretty crazy. Stronger than just THC alone. I'd recommend it. <laughs> just don't overdo it because I can see it being too much. Like just unpleasant if you go too overboard with it. I mean, the most that I ate was 300 milligrams of Delta 8 THC with like 50 milligrams of Delta 9 THC and that was a lot, honestly. I was really quite medicated. I was like, hi. Like, it was interesting. I might do it again. I kind of liked the combination of Delta 8 and Delta 9 THC together, but you can definitely use Delta 8 THC on its own, of course, and you can enjoy those not too high anti-paranoia high effects. If you want to learn more about how Delta 8 affects you, go check out this subreddit I found. I think it's just Delta 8 is the name of the subreddit. Um, it's a whole subreddit dedicated to this, dedicated to people finding relief and joy and whatever else they're finding in Delta 8 THC. And there are several different manufacturers now. Let me know if you want a full video on Delta 8 THC and brands that I've tried and we'll see what we can do over here. But for now, I will say I like Delta 8 THC. I think it's a great addition to the world. <laughs> I think it's lovely. It does seem to get you kind of high without the paranoia. I don't know how else to describe it, but that's what I've read about it and that's what I've experienced with it. So that's Delta 8 THC. Moving on to CBG. So one form of CBG that I've really been enjoying is CBG flower. This is a hemp flower that's high in CBG as opposed to CBD or any other cannabinoid. It looks kind of like cannabis, but it's hemp. Hemp and cannabis tend to look somewhat similar depending on certain factors, but there's your CBG flower. I've really been enjoying this. It gives me like a very mellowed out feeling, kind of similar to CBD, but something interesting about CBG is CBGA, the precursor to CBG, is also the precursor to THC and CBD. And so what's interesting about CBG is it decarboxylates into THC or CBD. It can be called the mother cannabinoid for that reason, because it breaks down into multiple different cannabinoids. I wasn't able to really find any clear-cut scientific research on whether CBG actually decarboxylates while you're smoking it into THC or CBD or how that works exactly. I just know that when I smoke CBG flower, I feel phenomenal. I feel so relaxed and like not high, but very chilled out and mellow. I really like it a lot. I've been using the CBG as like a replacement for daytime THC because honestly, I don't really love using a lot of THC during the daytime. I like to use it more for nighttime when I'm relaxing, when I'm winding down for the day, you know, kind of like my glass of wine at the night, except not wine at all. It's weed. It's cannabis. Sorry. I know a lot of people don't like the weed word, but I treat THC as like my 
nighttime glass of wine these days or yeah, that's pretty much how I treat it. Sometimes I'll use it during the day, yes. But for the most part, I use it at night. So my daytime has been CBG. I've been smoking this during the day and sometimes CBD as well, flower. Again, let me know if you want a video on CBD and CBG flower, <laughs> hemp flower. Let me know if you want videos on that. But CBG has been shown to have a lot of promise when it comes to gastrointestinal issues. So maybe like a CBG tincture could possibly be good for some people dealing with that. But I don't really know. This is not medical advice. I really don't know at the end of the day. So according to one article, strains high in CBG will be beneficial in treating conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, and cancer. So CPG has a lot of potential for medical reasons. I have to be careful what I say because this is not medical advice. Moving on to our next cannabinoid. Okay, this is one that I have not tried in isolate form yet. I really want to try it because I get munchies really like a lot when I smoke. <laughs> THC really tends to increase my appetite like it does for many of us. But what about THCV? THCV is like your anti-munchy cannabinoid. Apparently it could be the anti-munchy cannabinoid, um, which I know I could use sometimes. Apparently it can act as an appetite suppressant. So I just thought that was really cool and I wanted to add that to my list because wow. I mean, I'm, I'm out here trying to break stigmas, change minds, show sides of cannabis that people haven't really thought about or seen in a while or maybe at all. And isn't it just so cool that THCV does the exact opposite of what we think of weed as doing or what we think of cannabis as doing. Cannabis increases your appetite. Everyone thinks that or knows that. But what about if it could suppress your appetite, that is just mind blowing. Just to think about separating out a cannabinoid that does one specific thing. And I just think that's so cool. I think, I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. I think that cannabis research and like and all this stuff is so cool. It's so exciting. I'm not a scientist, so I can't take any credit for any of like the monumental leaps and bounds of research that are being done right now. But I can say, I think it's really damn cool, okay? I think THCV is awesome. I haven't tried it yet though, so that's another thing I need to be careful what I say because I haven't fucking tried it and I'm saying I love it. So <laughs> uh, calm down, I need to. Anyway, this is all just food for thought, really. I really wanted to just bring up a few different cannabinoids that maybe you can go and do your own research on. But yeah, for what it's worth, I've- Oh shit, I forgot one. I haven't done the last one. One more cannabinoid and this is one that I have tried. CBN. So CBN. So if you are a Florida medical patient, you can get CBN at True Leave in capsule form. But if you're not a medical patient, you can also get it as a hemp derived cannabinoid that you can buy online. It's just kind of expensive that way. So anyway, I have been trying these capsules, which are CBN, and I've been using them in conjunction with THC because I did some research on this and one article that I found from Dr. Emily Erlenbach, she wrote for Leafly about CBN. Basically, in her words, she said, CBN doesn't necessarily make you sleepy on its own, but CBN used with THC can enhance the euphoric effects of THC and can just basically can enhance the effects of THC in general. So CBN is almost like a THC booster in a way, which I think is very interesting. CBN is found in older cannabis because CBN is what happens when THC oxidizes. So CBN is like found often in older cannabis and it's also found in this form here, obviously. But yeah, this article says, while CBN may not be sedating on its own, you may be able to take advantage of its synergistic effects with THC to get the sleep inducing effects you are looking for. And I have been using this again, mostly at night. So CBN I've been taking at night or just before I take my THC, before I start smoking THC, but I have been saving these mostly for nighttime. I, re I made like a few notes about this. I remember them saying that the THC effects were strengthened by the CBN. So that's my experience. My experience is that CBN does help to enhance the effects of THC. So if you're out here looking for something that's going to give you that boost and you're already using THC, perhaps CBN might be something that helps you maybe because it can enhance some of the effects of THC according to that article. So again, I hope you enjoyed this. This is all food for thought. I really want you to take this information and do more research because there's a lot more you can read out there. There's articles, there's studies, there is a lot of 
research being done in the field of cannabis and hemp, and there are also lots of products popping up across the market everywhere. So it's kind of helpful, I think, to know what some of this stuff is, hopefully. Hopefully this has helped someone out there learn something about some cannabinoid. I don't know which one, but I hope something in this video helped you. I just wanted to start the conversation about cannabinoids. So here we go. That's it. That's the cannabinoid conversation so far, but it doesn't stop there because you can leave a comment and I plan to read your comments. So leave a comment if you feel so inclined and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. I hope to see you in my next video. So subscribe for notifications if YouTube decides to send notifications. <laughs> All right, bye.